For this shot, I want to go crazy with the editing today, so let's turn this raw file into this final image using Photoshop. As always, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video if you want to follow along and now let's jump into it. We are working with an HDR image to restore details from the highlights and the shadows of this scene and the first thing I want to do is to change the profile to Adobe Landscape. This will already help with the darkest areas as this profile makes them a little brighter and it also brings up the saturation quite nicely. Now let's expand the basic panel. Currently the white balance is a little bit too warm for my taste for this image so what I want to do is to bring it down a notch and this will introduce some more of those blue color tones right at this point you can see we have some nice blue tones in here while right there where the sunset is happening there's a lot of warmth so that's perfect. I guess we could bring up the tint just a little bit to make those sunset colors a little stronger and then let's work on the exposure. And the image does look weird with those harsh highlights against those dark shadows. I want to fix that by bringing up the exposure mainly for the darkest parts. I'm not raising it too much but just a little bit and I'm also going to raise the shadows for the same effect. This instantly looks much better but I can also bring up the blacks, tickling out some more details from those areas and at this point I also want to bring down the highlights. So by doing this we get a pretty nice balance between highlights and shadows. And you can also see that looking at the histogram. However, due to those changes the contrast right now doesn't look good. So I want to bring it up slightly. Just a bit. I'm going to mostly fix that if you're using a bit of masking. Also I do want to introduce texture and even a bit of clarity to give this image a lot of structure. And then I'm going to bring down the dehaze to add some kind of overall soft look on this image. This is especially visible right there in the brighter areas where it kind of creates this light bloom effect with the light spilling over the dark foreground. Then let's also bring up the vibrance since obviously I want this image to be saturated and this is looking pretty good so far. At this point we can work on the masks. So the first thing I want to do is to work on the sky. Here I want to make use of that blue color tone and make that area darker. So to do that I'm going to use a color range mask with the eyedrop active. I'm just clicking in here and let's see maybe we need to refine this a little bit so we don't accidentally target the clouds but I think this looks good. Also at the moment you can see there's a bit of foreground selected as well. So let's say subtract and choose a linear gradient and just create one like this for the upper right corner of the image. And then all we need to do is to bring down the exposure and add some very good looking contrast this way. I do want to create another linear gradient for the sky right away, covering most of it like this. And what I want to do here is to simply add a bit of contrast, which will further separate the clouds from the blue background. I am also going to introduce a little bit of clarity. And let's see, maybe even some saturation. Okay, for the next step, let's create a radial gradient. I am going to create some glow with this one. So I'm slightly tilting it to fit the lights direction coming in from the left side and I want to cover pretty much half of the image with this one. So in here all we need to do is to bring up the blacks and bring down the dehaze. I'm going to drop it quite a bit more than usually because I want to have a very heavy glow effect going on in here. Now because of those two adjustments we are losing saturation in here which is not what I want for this image. So to counter that problem I'm going to click on that color box, set up the hue to something warm like this and I'm going to bring up the saturation so we don't lose any color in here. In fact we are adding more warmth to this area by doing this. Perfect. Now let's also work on the foreground for a moment. I'm starting with the simple linear gradient again, covering most of the foreground like that. 
And what I want to do is to introduce clarity since this always works great with those reflections in the water. So that's great. It seems like bringing up the clarity might also drop the saturation in here, which I don't like. So again, I'm countering that by just bringing up the saturation again. Then let's create another linear gradient for the foreground coming in from the left side. And what I want to do with this one is to bring up the whites, just adding some more brightness to the water. Wonderful. I think I also need to adjust the center a bit. So let's use a radial gradient covering all those darker areas right there in the center. And to fix those, I'm going to further bring up the shadows. So we get some visible detail in here. Okay, that looks great. Maybe even bring up the blacks a bit, but that's it. And here we have the image after the masking adjustments. So we went from the base settings to this. Looks pretty good so far, but of course, now with the color grading, we can do some more things to it. Let's start this in the color mixer. I want to go into the hue tab first and slightly bring down the yellow hue. This will shift those warmer sunset colors more towards the red color tone, which I like for this scene. And I'm going to go into the saturation tab next and let's bring up the orange saturation. But I also want to bring down the yellow saturation, kind of balancing those two colors against each other. Okay, I don't think I touched the blue tones. I want to go straight into the split toning. And here, let's start with the highlights. Of course, since we are working with the sunset image, we want to set up the hue to something warm, further improving the colors of the image. Now I set up the hue. Let's bring up the saturation. I don't want to go too crazy with this, but right here looks good. I'm also going to use the midtones for the same effect. I'm going to bring up the hue to something warm and bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Now one more thing in regards to the color grading is in the calibration tab, I want to bring down the blue primary hue, further improving those warmer red tones. And let's bring up the saturation. That looks awesome. And finally, we can do the sharpening in the details tab. So as always, I'm using the same settings. I'm bringing down the radius, increase the details, hold on the alt key and adjust the masking slider and then bring up the amount of sharpening. So these were the raw adjustments. We went from this original HDR raw file to this edited version. But of course we can do some more tweaking in Photoshop. So let's open up this object. First off, I want to clean up this image. So let's use the spot healing brush. Just going to clean up the water a bit. So we get a much smoother surface here. Okay, that was quite a bit of work. Next up, let's improve that glow on the left side. I'm going to create a new layer, switch the layer blending mode to soft light, grab the brush by pressing B, and I'm going to pick up a color tone from that bright part by holding down the Alt key and just click in, clicking in there. So I want to make it more saturated. That's why I'm bringing that point of the foreground color further to the right. And I'm also bringing down the brush saturation. So with that setup, I'm going to carefully paint in a little more glow coming in from that uh, left side. And I'm going to change up the colors a bit, making it seem to be a bit brighter towards the horizon. Okay, that looks great. Then I want to work on the foreground and the sky a bit. I'm going to use a levels adjustment layer. I want to use the layer mask and brush out the center part. So pretty much just like this. I'm going to use a black brush and paint over it. And now what I want to do with those levels is to bring in more contrast. So I'm using that black point and drag it further to the right. And I think I'm also going to mask out the near foreground of that levels adjustment layer. So that looks great. Then we can play around with the warmth a bit. So I'm going to use the photo filter adjustment layer for that. I'm not going to change much here. I am just going to invert the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I. 
Then again, I make use of the brush tool with the foreground color set to white to paint in some of that warmth on the left side. Wonderful. I think I want to add even more glow to the left side. So again, I'm creating a new layer. This time, however, let's go with the hard light blending mode. And again, bring the brush opacity down to around 10%. Just adding some real heavy glow in here. I think that should be enough. At this point, I also want to create Orton Glow. So let's merge everything, hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. Then we're going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, set the radius to around 30 pixel, hit OK, and go straight into the edit menu and choose Fade Gaussian Blur. Here we want to switch the mode from normal to lighten and bring down the opacity. So that's looking pretty good. Let's hit OK. I'm going to apply a layer mask on this Orton Glow layer. And I'm going to use the gradient tool with the foreground color set to black. And we want to choose the basic one going from black to transparent. And with this gradient, I'm just painting on that layer mask to mask out the foreground. So doing this, we just have the autumn glow effect on the upper part of the image. And at this point, let's create one more levels adjustment layer. Again, I'm making use of that layer mask and the gradient tool, mask out the top part like this, and then I'm inverting the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I. And this way, with these levels, I'm really only targeting this area of the sky. You can also see that on the histogram, it looks quite different. So we can add more contrast by bringing that point, that black point further to the right. Just like this, wonderful. And finally, let's just add one more vibrance adjustment layer and bring up the vibrance. And that's it, I guess. As I said, this was quite some heavy editing, but I really, really like how this looks. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.